Some people think we may have canceled. We're not canceling anything. We're coming, and we're looking forward to, to being with the... Uh, Prominent evangelist Dr. Franklin Graham has announced a surprising decision that could have a profound impact on his faith community and humanitarian work. After years of leading meaningful initiatives, he is considering retiring. What prompted this decision? What does it mean for the communities he served? Let's explore the reasons behind Franklin Graham's emotional farewell. But first, let's learn about his early life to get a more comprehensive view of this man. Franklin Graham was born on July 14, 1952, in Asheville, North Carolina, into a family with a strong and prominent Christian background. His father, Billy Graham, was an influential evangelist of the 20th century who spread the Christian faith to millions around the world. His mother, Ruth Bell Graham, was the daughter of medical missionaries working in China. Raised in a deeply religious family, she carried her strong faith with her throughout her life. Billy and Ruth were not only devout Christians, but also devoted parents who taught their children Christian values. They raised their five children, including Franklin, in an environment that valued faith, prayer, and living by biblical principles. In the Graham household, the Bible was more than just a book. It was the foundation of everyday life. Franklin grew up surrounded by Christian teachings and faced the high expectations of being the son of a world-famous evangelist. While Billy Graham became an international figure, traveling to preach on global evangelistic crusades, his mother, Ruth, was the breadwinner at home. She was a woman of faith and wisdom who helped shape the values Franklin and his siblings instilled in them. As he entered his teenage years, Franklin Graham began to feel stifled by the religious principles imposed by his family. Living in the shadow of his famous father and his strict expectations made him feel pressured and uncomfortable. Instead of accepting the Christian path, Franklin began to stray from it, engaging in experiences that were completely different from the values he had been taught since childhood. During his rebellious years, Franklin chose a lifestyle that went against the teachings that his family had always promoted. He tried activities that surprised his family and those who knew him. Franklin rebelled against all authority, refusing to follow the religious teachings and rules that his parents had built. The climax of this rebellion was when he was expelled from a boarding school in New York for unruly behavior. This was a real shock to his family marking a difficult period in his young life. Franklin continued to struggle with his studies in college, often finding it impossible to focus on his studies. At that time, he was most concerned with living for himself, satisfying his passions and desires without regard for the consequences. His selfish and reckless lifestyle led him to indulge in instant pleasures, without regard for the future or lasting values. During his younger years, Franklin Graham increasingly strayed from the path his family expected of him. Although he grew up in a devoutly religious family, the pressure to live up to his father's legacy left him feeling frustrated and disoriented. Instead of upholding Christian values, Franklin became a rebellious man, seeking happiness on his terms regardless of the values he had been taught. Franklin's spiritual transformation occurred at the age of 22, a moment that would forever shape his life. After years of rebellion and indifference to his faith, he took a trip to Jerusalem, where he experienced a profound awakening. It was in the Holy City that Franklin had the opportunity to read the Bible seriously, especially the Gospel of John. While reading, a passage from John 3.3 made a strong impression on him. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The concept of rebirth awakened Franklin, making him realize that faith was not just something he had heard about as a child, but an experience that needed to be felt for himself. The teachings of Jesus completely changed Franklin's direction, helping him see faith not as a family burden, but as a personal path in life. The moment in Jerusalem became a turning point 
leading him back to the values he had strayed from. It was only then that Franklin Graham truly felt the deep and personal meaning of the gospel message. The words about spiritual rebirth made him realize that he needed a new beginning, a new beginning with God. For the first time, Franklin understood that becoming a Christian was not just about following rules or living a model life. It was about building a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and experiencing a profound change of heart. The concept of being born again helped Franklin realize that he could give up his old ways, like partying, rebellion, and selfishness, and start a new life living fully for God. Franklin understood that he could no longer deny the truth he had encountered, and realized that a change in life was necessary. From then on, Franklin's lifestyle began to change dramatically. He gave up old habits like drinking and smoking, and instead focused on strengthening his relationship with God. He spent time praying and studying the Bible, and began to find joy in his commitment to his faith rather than in the temporary pleasures of his past. This newfound faith prompted Franklin to commit to the ministry. He felt called not only to continue his father's legacy, but also because he truly wanted to share the message of Jesus with those around him. After experiencing a spiritual awakening, Franklin Graham felt a strong calling to the ministry. However, he did not immediately respond to this call, and it took a long time for him to be fully ready to enter the missionary path. His first steps in missionary work came naturally through his close association with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, the organization that his father, Billy Graham, had founded and led for decades. Initially, Franklin was uncertain about the missionary path he would take. He did not want to simply follow his father's path because that was what was expected. Instead, he wanted to find his path, one that was consistent with his newly discovered beliefs and values. However, joining the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association opened up valuable opportunities for him to explore the practical aspects of missionary work. Franklin began attending events, traveling with missionary groups, and learning about the work of running crusades which gave him a better understanding of the organization and how the Billy Graham Association spread the gospel message globally. During this time, one of the people who had a profound influence on Franklin was Bob Pierce, the founder of Samaritan's Purse, a Christian humanitarian organization. Bob Pierce was not only a teacher of missionary work, but also a model of how to combine faith and humanitarian work to serve the community. Connecting with people like Bob Pierce helped Franklin find confidence in his purpose in serving God and bringing positive change to the world. Bob Pierce's work has always focused on helping people in need around the world, especially in areas of great suffering. Franklin Graham had great respect for Pierce's dedication to missionary work and humanitarian efforts, and this relationship had a profound impact on him. Pierce's approach to ministry was different from traditional preaching. As he went beyond words and demonstrated Christ's love through actions, practically helping people. In 1973, Franklin went on his first mission trip with Pierce, and this was a major turning point in his life. This trip not only opened Franklin's eyes to the depth of the hardships people around the world were facing, but also ignited in him a deep passion for humanitarian work. Seeing firsthand the pain and poverty that people endured in such places made Franklin realize that he wanted to make a difference, helping those who were struggling. This experience not only helped Franklin understand that his calling was not only to preach and spread the gospel, but also to meet the basic needs of people. It was a way for him to demonstrate God's love through concrete actions. This trip became a turning point opening Franklin to a new direction in both missionary work and humanitarian work. Franklin realized that he had a strong passion for helping people in need, especially those who were severely affected by poverty, war, and natural disasters. 
This was a new dimension in his ministry, practically combining faith and action. From that moment on, Franklin understood that his life could be used not only to spread the gospel, but also to provide practical support to those in need, demonstrating God's love through concrete and practical actions. The profound influence of both the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Samaritan's Purse helped Franklin Graham find and shape his career path. He not only continued his father's work, but also combined his passion for ministry with humanitarian relief work, creating a powerful and global impact. It was through these early steps that Franklin discovered a special calling where he could combine evangelism and support for people's basic needs. At just 26 years old, Franklin took on an important leadership role as president of Samaritan's Purse, following the passing of founder Bob Pierce. Pierce had been a great mentor and inspiration to Franklin throughout his education in ministry and humanitarian work. When Pierce passed away, Franklin, still young and inexperienced in leadership, stepped up to continue his legacy, renewing and expanding the organization's reach. Under Franklin's leadership, Samaritan's Purse grew from a small organization to a large global humanitarian force. He had a clear vision to not only continue the work Pierce had begun, but also expand the organization to more areas, especially those most affected by war, natural disasters, and poverty. One of Franklin's major priorities was to ensure that Samaritan's Purse did not only provide material help, but also focused on meeting people's spiritual needs. Franklin believed that addressing material needs was important, but equally important was sharing God's love through concrete actions. This could be through medical programs, food distribution, or building shelters for those in need. The combination of material and spiritual support has helped Samaritan's Purse stand out as a humanitarian organization that not only addresses immediate needs, but also aims to make a lasting difference in the lives of those it helps. Franklin's approach has helped the organization demonstrate a mission that goes beyond immediate relief to a holistic concern for the long-term well-being of the world's poor and vulnerable. The organization Samaritan's Purse extended its activities to include projects such as Operation Christmas Child, which distributes gifts to children in need all around the world while also spreading the message of the gospel. Franklin was the head of this particular endeavor. It was Franklin's leadership that was important in the organization's ability to respond to global crises with increased speed and efficiency. And this transition was made possible by Franklin's leadership. Over the course of his involvement with Samaritan's Purse, Franklin continued to steer the organization through significant humanitarian endeavors. These endeavors included reactions to natural disasters such as hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis, as well as the provision of assistance in areas of war. The success of the organization may be attributed to his dedication to assisting people who are in need and to spreading his religious beliefs around. Today, Samaritan's Purse is active in more than 100 countries, and its influence has been felt by millions of people. Samaritan's Purse has been headed by Franklin Graham throughout the years in its response to some of the most severe disasters that have occurred on a worldwide scale. The fact that he takes a hands-on approach to disaster relief demonstrates his profound dedication to assisting those who are in need. Two significant instances of these efforts are the earthquake that occurred in Haiti in 2010 and the refugee crisis that is occurring in Syria. Haiti was left in ruins when the earthquake struck the country, with hundreds of thousands of lives lost and even more people being forced to flee their homes during the disaster. To personally monitor the relief efforts in Haiti, Franklin traveled there himself. He made certain that Samaritan's Purse was one of the first groups to arrive on the scene. The afflicted individuals were supplied with food, shelter, clean water, and emergency medical care by the organization. Long after the first shock of the accident had become less noticeable in the news, 
his team established field hospitals and assisted in the reconstruction of several villages. Similarly, during the refugee crisis in Syria, Franklin and Samaritan's Purse came together to offer assistance to the millions of individuals who had been forced to flee their homes as a result of the continuous conflict. A great number of refugees made their way to countries like Jordan and Lebanon, where they are currently residing in temporary camps with restricted access to essential items. If someone needed assistance, whether it was food, housing, or medical treatment, Franklin made certain that Samaritan's Purse was available to supply it. His conviction in servant leadership was illustrated by these missions, in which he not only led from the front, but also highlighted the significance of caring for people in ways that were both meaningful and practical. Christmas Child is an organization. Operation Christmas Child is one of the most well-known efforts that Franklin oversaw during his tenure as Secretary of State. Shoeboxes are being stuffed with presents and necessities for children all around the world who are in need of assistance as part of this effort. Toys, school materials, and hygiene goods are among the gifts that are included in each box. Additionally, the box typically includes a message of hope via the Christian religion. The mission of Operation Christmas Child is straightforward. To provide happiness to children and to demonstrate to them that they are loved and cared for by someone, even in the most trying of situations. During the process of broadening the scope of this endeavor, Franklin was a significant contributor. In the early 1990s, when it was originally started, it was a rather modest undertaking. However, Franklin was the driving force behind the quick expansion of Operation Christmas Child. A total of millions of shoeboxes are sent to children every year, and the organization currently operates in more than 170 countries. What Franklin had in mind for the initiative was not just to give away presents, but also to convey a message of love and hope to youngsters who might have the impression that they have been forgotten or abandoned. Operation Christmas Child has had a significant and far-reaching impact. In many instances, it provides families with a sense of comfort during times of difficulty, and it results in smiles appearing on the faces of youngsters. The method that Franklin Graham takes for humanitarian assistance does not end with the immediate relief efforts that are being made. He has made it his mission to assist communities in rebuilding after natural catastrophes and to provide them with the tools necessary to become self-sufficient over time. Samaritan's Purse continues to assist a significant amount of time after the initial crisis has passed regardless of whether it is in the aftermath of a natural disaster, like as a hurricane or an earthquake, or during a crisis such as war or hunger. Frequently, they offer long-term support that assists communities in recovering from disasters by assisting in the reconstruction of houses, schools, and hospitals. Franklin's method has a significant component that involves working closely with local churches. According to him, the only way for communities to experience long-lasting change is for the people who live there to be a part of the solution. One of the ways that Samaritan's Purse can provide both physical and spiritual assistance is via its partnerships with local churches. It is common for churches to continue providing assistance to families long after Samaritan's Purse has moved on to the next crisis. After his father, Billy Graham, passed away in 1989, Franklin Graham has been carrying on the tradition of his father by organizing several huge evangelical festivals each year. Franklin has taken on the responsibility of sharing the gospel with people all over the world by supervising more than 325 festivals that are held in more than 55 nations. Thousands of people assemble to listen to the message of faith and hope that is being conveyed at these festivals, which are often enormous gatherings that are staged in stadiums or other big locations. Franklin's celebrations are organized in a manner that is comparable to the well-known crusades that his father conducted for a number of years. At all times, there is a definite emphasis placed on spreading the gospel 
and encouraging others to respond to the message that salvation may be found through Jesus Christ. There is typically music, testimonials, and Franklin's own preaching during the festivals. Franklin's teaching is always straightforward and has its foundation in the Bible. Despite the fact that people of various ages attend these gatherings, Franklin's primary objective is to communicate with those individuals who may have never previously heard or comprehended the gospel. The importance of these festivals extends well beyond the actual event that is being celebrated. It is common for them to act as a catalyst for spiritual rebirth in the communities in which they are hosted. It is possible for the festivals to have a significant influence on the local churches, which play a significant part in the preparations for the festivals. As a consequence of Franklin's outreach, many people have seen an increase in the number of people attending church and a newfound interest in the ministry. Franklin Graham's approach to evangelism has been successfully updated in some important ways, one of which is by embracing new modes of communication. Franklin understood that in this digital age, it could be insufficient to reach people through more conventional methods, such as live events. He has made sure that his events are culturally relevant and accessible to everyone by incorporating new technology like social media and live streaming. For example, several of his events are broadcast live online so that those who are unable to attend in person may still enjoy them. Because of this, the Gospel Word has been able to reach many more people. Another application of social media is reaching out to younger generations who might not be as receptive to traditional church-going or big-scale public gatherings. Franklin ensured that the message of faith and hope could reach new audiences by reaching people where they are, on their phones or laptops. Millennials and Generation Z have felt the effects of this modernity the most. Through these new channels, the festivals have reached a younger audience and, in some instances, affected whole families. One reason for Franklin's ministry's continuous success has been his ability to adjust to these changes while maintaining the gospel's central message unchanged. The change that occurs in local communities is a prominent result of Franklin Graham's festivals. Church attendance and mission initiatives usually see a dramatic uptick following a festival. The decision to follow Christ made by many festival goers might impact not only themselves, but also their loved ones and neighbors. Franklin makes it a point to make sure the festivities continue long after the main event has concluded. He thinks that follow-up and ongoing assistance are necessary for spiritual progress to persist. That is why the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Samaritan's Purse collaborate so closely with the local churches in the regions where the festivals are conducted. These houses of worship are always ready to receive new members and provide them with the means they need to mature in their faith. Crucial to this process are partnerships with nearby churches. Franklin understands that the local church is the vehicle through which a community may be truly transformed. Many churches report an uptick in ministry and outreach activities following the festivals, which is a good indicator of the heightened energy and excitement that permeates the congregation. Churches may be revitalized and given new life via this process, allowing them to have a greater influence on their communities. Debatable Topics Franklin Graham has been rather outspoken about his political beliefs. He has taken a strong stand on many social and political issues throughout the years. His unwavering backing of Donald Trump, both before and after his administration, stands out among his public activities. In particular, Franklin lauded Trump's measures that were consistent with conservative Christian principles. In response to Trump's detractors, he praised the president saying that the protection of religious liberty in America required his leadership. In addition to publicly endorsing some politicians, Franklin has spoken out on controversial topics, including religious liberty, immigration, and LGBTQ rights. 
His outspoken opposition to LGBTQ rights and same-sex marriage has caused quite a stir. It is no secret that Franklin has used his public position to openly state his conviction that marriage should only be between a man and a woman. Some have criticized him because of this, seeing his stance as biased. There are differing viewpoints on Franklin's call for tougher immigration restrictions with respect to particular nations. His political position on immigration has frequently been perceived as at odds with the humanitarian principles he advocates, despite his emphasis on aiding the needy through Samaritan's Purse. Additionally, he has been vocal in his defense of religious freedom, particularly for Christians who see persecution for their faith in the face of secularization. Franklin's outspoken political and social views have led to a fair amount of polarization, both within the evangelical community and in society at large. Some evangelicals have applauded his willingness to stand up for traditional Christian values, seeing him as a strong voice for religious freedom in a world that is becoming more secular. However, others, including fellow Christians, have criticized him for being too political and divisive, arguing that his approach to these issues is too confrontational. Franklin has taken a lot of heat for his extreme stances, particularly on LGBTQ rights, which have caused him to lose support from many quarters. Some people think he doesn't live up to his famous father, Billy Graham's reputation for kindness and inclusion in his speech. Billy Graham was more balanced when it came to contentious issues, even though he held to orthodox Christian views. He was more welcoming in his outreach because he sought to preach the gospel to everyone, regardless of their background or way of life. Preaching the gospel to everyone, regardless of their social or political beliefs, was central to Billy Graham's legacy. He avoided being overly identified with any political group or ideology, keeping his attention squarely on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Franklin, in contrast, has adopted a more political stance, which has caused friction in the Christian community and within the Graham family. Some members of Franklin's family have spoken out about their disapproval of his political activism, arguing that it takes attention away from Billy Graham's more universal message of grace and compassion. Franklin maintains his firm convictions despite these differences, claiming that he is defending biblical ideals in a society that is growing more and more antagonistic to Christianity. Individual Devastation for Franklin Graham, a watershed event came with Billy Graham's death in February 2018. In addition to losing a parent, he also lost a role model whose influence on his life and religion was enormous when he lost his father. Evangelist Billy Graham was well-loved and an inspiration to many people throughout the globe. Grief and a need for his father's counsel and advice were the primary emotional responses to Franklin's father's death. Thinking back on his father's life lessons, Franklin found himself thinking about his values and principles. Their numerous discussions of religion, ministry, and the value of selfless service came back to him. A hole that was hard to fill appeared after his father passed away. The burden of expectation to continue his father's work and ministry fell on Franklin. He felt immense pressure to carry on his father's task of preaching the gospel and to emulate his exemplary behavior and character. After seeing his father's lifelong efforts to establish a reputation for honesty and kindness, Franklin resolved to do his best to carry on his father's heritage. Spiritual contemplation occurred to Franklin at several points along his journey through mourning. His father's steadfast faith had been an inspiration to many, and this notion weighed heavily on his mind. He pondered the meaning of living out one's beliefs as a result of this meditation. Franklin understood that his father taught him many things, including how to be a public minister and how to grow in his own devotion to God. It dawned on him that his father's legacy lay not just in the grand ceremonies and live broadcasts, but also in the small moments of praying, helping people, and saying goodbye. 
Over the past few years, Franklin Graham has had to make a big choice about his leadership and ministry destiny. This departure is much more than simply giving over the reins. He has been burdened by personal, spiritual, and health-related considerations. With this impending event, Franklin considered his own life and the weight of responsibility that comes with presiding over an evangelical organization of Samaritan's purses, size, and scope. Franklin cited his health as a major factor in his choice. The age-old question of whether or not his job is physically demanding has finally come up for him. It takes passion and dedication to lead an institution that deals with international disasters. To ensure he can continue to serve successfully, Franklin has expressed his want to be sure. To make sure his contributions last and to put his health first, he knows he may have to take a step back. Franklin has considered the burden of duty he bears with his health worries. He knows all too well the weight of expectation that comes with carrying on his father Billy Graham's legacy. The difficulty of continuing his father's work while forging his own path in the ministry is something that Franklin has frequently discussed. He has relied heavily on this equilibrium to inform his choices. As he reflected on his departure, he saw that fresh leadership was needed inside Samaritan's Purse and the Christian world at large. As Franklin is about to leave, many are curious about what will happen to his ministry when he leaves. Not only does his family perceive his choice to stand aside as a major move, but the whole evangelical world does as well. Many are wondering what the future holds for the business and who will step into his leadership shoes. In the religious world, Franklin is revered and admired by many. Once he leaves, new leadership can step in and provide their viewpoints on the job, which could lead to innovative ideas and methods. This chapter may be closing, but the innumerable lives he has touched will ensure that his legacy will go on. What do you think about Franklin Graham's farewell? Could there be a leader who could have done better? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.